Anon the Ponies Man You are Anon, Ponies Man in a Ponies Mare's world. You figured you'd be better suited to handle the criminal elements than all these marshmallow ponies. You were right, but you forgot two things. You are a stallion. The criminals are marshmallow ponies too. So, here you are, stuck behind a desk while your fellow officers risk noogies and skinned knees. They only come to you when- Oh, hey chief, what's up? Gruff Puff looks grim. The bad pony who stole the ambassador's teddy bear won't talk. The ambassador hasn't been Betty by for two nights. She places a hoof on your shoulder. You can see how much she hates asking this of you. Could you persuade the bad pony to cooperate? You do your best to keep a straight face. I'll handle it, Chief. Gruff Puff gives a firm nod, then strides away. You make your way down to firmly asked questions, stretching your arms to get you ready. The few pony smears you pass give sympathetic looks. You open the door to the hard chair room, and a roguish mare looks you over. You return the favor as you sit across the small tea set from her. Earth pony, gray coat, her mane black cropped at the jaw. She smirks. You have the wrong mare, sweet flanks. Unless you have plans for me after you let me go. You just give her a flat stare, and the smirk begins to falter. You methodically move the tea set onto the floor, piece by piece, letting the clatter sound in the small room. She watches you warily, uncertain. Once the table is clear, you stand up, and the mare gets to her hooves too, tensing. It doesn't matter. Here quicker. You lean across and snatch her up into your arms, cradling her on her back. Hey, what do you think you're doing? You bring her face close to yours, muddling her mind with your breath and scent. At last, you speak. I'm disappointed, little filly. Her eyes go wide, her struggling limbs slowing, and you frown deeply. I thought I raised you better than this. What? Don't take that tone with me, filly. She freezes up, assaulted by the raw force of your paternal presence. Yeah, yes, yes, Papa. You begin rocking her gently. I know you're not a bad filly. You stroke some of her mane out of the way, gazing into her teary eyes. You just made a mistake. That's all. Now, why don't you tell me where you hid the colt's teddy, and then we can get you some ice cream. She sniffles. Really? You nuzzle her a little. Really? She spills the beans and you send a mare to retrieve the teddy. Then you guide the shell-shocked thief to the department ice cream machine and keep your word. After that, Gruff Puff gives her a stern talking to and sees her to the door. The thief looks over her shoulder at you, blushing in embarrassment. Would it be okay if we talked again? You give her a smile. Sure. Just make an appointment with the front desk. She smiles then. Thanks. I'll be good to go now. You give her a wave and then return to the office. Gruff Puff walks beside you, eyeing you worriedly. You can take the rest of the day off, if you'd like. FAQs always take a lot out of me. I can't imagine what it's like for a stallion like you. You ruffle her mane, a little irritated by the consideration. I'll be fine, and I'd hate to let the paperwork pile up too much. She unscrunches. Right. Well, I know I've said it before, but the department's lucky to have a stallion like you on the force. You grin. You just like staring at my butt. Gruff Puff hits you on the arm, hitting like a marshmallow bouncing off a side of beef. I am far too old for frisky cults like you. If you aren't going home, then get to work. Aye aye, chief. She nods and retreats to her office. Just another day on the job. It finally happened. Your campaign of suggestion, mild seduction, and the casual mention of a concern about your weight has finally paid off. You are on patrol. Admittedly in the quietest part of the city with two mayor officers accompanying you, but that that's not important. It feels good to just walk around in your uniform, stretching your legs, keeping a watchful eye out for crime. The citizens you pass look at you with respect, deferentially looking down and blushing when you greet them casually. A weather team pushes some clouds over to the central park, a few of the mares gesturing towards you. 
Hey, tripod, trot for us. They laugh raucously. Downy Draft fluffs up angrily, her wings rustling. <sighs> What's up? The Pegasus Ponies officer scowls. Ponies like that give us Pegasi a bad name. You tilt your head. Reckon we should do something about that? Downy grins. <sighs> Be my guest. Point Hexter gives you an unimpressed look, but doesn't say anything. You turn towards the weather team and get serious. Hey, you three, get down here! The cat collars glance at each other and shrug. They swoop down and land about 50 feet away, and the lead mare is gazing in what you have to come to recognize as the crotchward direction. Can we help you, officer? You snap your fingers loudly, directing their gaze upward. Then you pour on the scowl. Ponies aren't great at shows of displeasure, but they're used to being scrunched at from time to time. That's not what you're doing. Your forehead wrinkles. Your frown deepens. You start a low rumble in the back of your throat. And all five mares' eyes shrink to pinpricks. You bare your teeth in a silent snarl. I thought Manhattan weather teams were the best in Equestria. I thought they were professional, hard-working mares. One of the catcaller's wings slowly extended, her face reddening. Just... Uh, ignore, ignore that. I better not hear about this again. Understand? They nod once, then flee. Downey exhales shakily. Tartarus. Anon, remind me to never, ever make you angry. What? Why would you ever worry about angering a harmless little stallion like me? Point Hexer snorts. You are neither little nor harmless, Officer Anonymous. Frankly, I'm beginning to doubt whether or not you are even a stallion. You rock back in mock pain. Oh, whoa! Sick burns from Officer Cold Shoulder! She gives you a flat look as Downey giggles. My name is Point Hexter. Enough of this, we have to beat a patrol. I suggest that we do so. <sighs> Good point, Hexter. I'll try to rein in my shenanigans. She nods sternly and takes the lead position. You fall into step with Downey, and the Pegasus beckons you closer with a wing, glancing at the unicorn. You lean down so she can whisper. Don't worry. She's just being a hard flank because she doesn't swing your way. Normally, she's much nicer. You look speculatively at point Hexter. Doesn't that also mean that she likes you? Like, uh, like, like? Point Hexter glares at you over her shoulder, her face reddening. That is none of your business. You hold up your hands and surrender. Downy Draft grins. He's gonna hear about it from some pony. Pony and I, we have a somewhat special arrangement. We won't herd, even though I am by. You shrug. Eh, sounds reasonable. Hexter stops and jabs a hoof out at you. See, even he thinks so. Downey ruffles her wings in a Pegasus-y shrug. I wasn't raised as liberally as you two. It doesn't feel like a herd unless there's a stallion to take care of the foals. I still love you, Pokemuffin. Hexter blushes furiously, then does an about face. Th th that's enough talking. Every pony, we're on duty. Let's act like it. You throw a mock salute. Yes, ma'am! Downey smiles, and the three of you continue. Point Sexter had mostly gotten back to normal by the time the patrol found a stallion staring up fretfully up into a densely limbed tree. Hexter glances significantly at you, and Downey then leads the way over. What seems to be the problem, sir? The stallion paused nervously at the ground. M my fall is up there. Please, get him back before he falls. Sounds like a job for Officer Monkey. He'll be down in a jiffy, sir. Anon. You scramble up the trunk, focused on the little colt, up in the branches. You make it a few more feet before the little guy starts glowing and drifting down past you. You look down to see Point Hexter smirk at you. The colt soon reunited with his father. Laugh it up, fuzzball. When you make it down there, the two males had already wandered off. Hexter clears her throat. I realize you want to be a powerful, self-reliant stallion. That does not require the assistance of any mare, but we are on patrol for a reason. I recognize the brutish strength of your monkey race. Please do the same for my magic in Downey's flight. He glanced sidelong at Downey. Your 
Mayor Friend has a sharp tongue. Well... I like it. At any rate, I apologize, Point Hexter. I will strive to be more aware of the individual strengths of this team, and my place at that. The unicorn gives you a rare smile. See that you do. Shall we go on? The rest of the day passes in a golden blur of small favors and the occasional stern lecture. When you get back to the station, Gruff Puff is waiting for you, and Point Hexter steps forward. I am glad to report that Officer Anonymous has successfully integrated into our patrol. We would have no objections if this would become his permanent assignment. Gruff nods, not too surprised. Good. Good. I do have one question, though. Hexter looks attentively, and Gruff Puff pulls out a hoof-written letter. Why do I have a written apology from the Major of the Weather Team for her actions towards the Stallion Officer? Wait... Wait, wait, that was the Major of the whole- Downey breaks down giggling, and you round on her. You knew! The Pegasus gasps for air. It was priceless! She'll never live down getting tongue-lashed by a rookie pony stallion! Point Hexter is smirking at you again, and Gruff Puff is coughing suspiciously into her hoof. You raise your hands imploringly to the uncaring pony's station ceiling. Mares! Hexter grins. And now you finally act like a true stallion. You stalk off to your desk while the three collapse in laughter. You have a job to do, and not even the mockery of lesbians and a cougar will keep you from it. <laughs>